Okay, guys, today we are covering chapter 16, hair cutting part 3. Uh, and during this lesson, uh, by the time we complete this lesson, you will be able to explain the uses of various tools of hair cutting. You're also going to be able to name three things you can do to ensure good posture and body position while cutting hair. One thing uh, that is really important about using your tools is how to hold them properly. And a proper hold gives you the most control and best uh, results when cutting, uh, when it comes down to shears. Uh, a proper hold helps you avoid muscle strain uh, in your hands, arms, and neck, and as well as back. Um, uh, holding the shears, uh, you want to keep in mind to open your dominant hand and place your ring finger in the finger grip of the steel blade and your little finger in your finger brace, which is the tang, where the little uh, finger lays on there. <clears throat> you also want to place your thumb in the finger grip on of the movable, the moving blade because remember we have two different blades when it comes down to shears one is the movable blade and one is the uh, immovable blade so the only movable blade that is going to be moving while you're cutting is where your thing your thumb is laying on okay uh, that is the movable blade practicing opening and closing them and concentrate only on moving your thumb only the thumb you want to learn to cut while holding the comb to save time so every time you get a subsection you don't want to drop your your place your comb on your station no you want to continue moving while holding your all-purpose comb uh, your dominant hands uh, does most of the work uh, it holds the shears, part of the hair, comb the hair, and cuts the hair. The holding hand simply holds the hair and the comb while cutting. Another thing that you want to keep in mind is when you're popping the shear. You want to remove your thumb from the thumb grip, leaving your ring and little finger in the grip and finger rest. Curl your finger. Curl your fingers in into the palm uh, into the palm uh, to palm the shears which keeps them close while comb while you comb in or parting the hair you also want to keep in mind when you're transferring the comb after you have combed a subsection into position you need to be free of your cutting hand once your finger are in place in the correct position you want to make sure you transfer the comb by placing it between the thumb and the index index finger of your holding hand okay so you do want to keep that in mind uh, you know to hold it in your holding hand which is the one that's holding the subsection um, now once you have done all that you're ready to cut okay We have the uh, uh, also the razor that you have to keep in mind. There's two different uh, there's different types of razors, but there's also different method of how to hold the razor. Uh, a method A, you want to hold, uh, you want to open the razor so the handle is higher than the uh, shank. Okay, you want to place the thumb on the thumb grip, as you can see on the image. Place index, middle, and ring finger on the shank. Place the little finger on the end of the tang underneath the handle. When cutting a section, position the razor on top of the subsection, the part facing you, for maximum control. Then we have the method B, which is you open the razor all the way so the handle and shank can be into a straight form as you can see in the image you want to place the thumb on the grip and wrap fingers around the handle both uh, when 
handling the comb in, in uh, you want to make sure it's tension. Both the white and uh, fine teeth of the comb are regularly used when cutting hair. The white teeth are used for combing the hair and parting it, uh, while the fine, finer teeth comb the section before cutting. The finer teeth provide more tension and are useful when cutting around the ears. When dealing with difficult hairlines and when cutting curly hair, you should plan on spending some time practicing to turn the comb in your, in, in your hands while palming the shears. Also, keep in mind about the tension. Tension is so important when it comes down to haircut. It's the amount tension. The definition of tension is the amount of pressure applied when combing and holding a subsection. Tension, tension is created by stretching or pulling the subsection. Tension ranges from minimum to maximum. You control tension with your fingers when you hold a subsection of hair between them. Consistent tension is important for constant and even result in a haircut. Maximum tension is used on straight hair when you want precise lines. Uh, you want less tension when you use uh, when you cut in curly or wavy hair. Uh, less tension is better because it's uh, uh, because a lot of tension will cause uh, in the hair shrinkable shrinking and is uh, even more if even more than usual as it dries. Minimum or no tension should be used around the ears and on around the hairline with strong growth pattern, especially people who have colics around the front. You want to avoid tension, a lot of tension in it. Right now, I want you to take a minute and think about uh, placing, uh, holding the shears. Uh, place, <clears throat> hold the shears and practice moving just the movable blade. So place your fingers inside, uh, your, um, place them in the correct position, keeping in mind that you need to place your uh, uh, ring finger and your uh, uh, thumb in the little holes, and then the little ring, the uh, pinky should be on your, on the tang. And then the other two fingers should be laying next to the uh, ring finger and then the only the mobile blade should be moving at this time okay when you're practicing so I'm gonna give you a few seconds to practice 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 because it's important for you to understand how which is the mobile blade and how to properly or uh, place your finger in the correct areas of your finger Okay, now we are going to move on. Okay, understand proper postures uh, and body position. Posture is how you stand and sit. So body position is how you hold your body and when cutting, good posture and body position will help you avoid back problems in the future to ensure better hurt cutting results. You want to make sure you position the client Sit is straight and make sure that the legs are not crossed when you cut in the client. Cause if your client uh, shoulder, I mean when if if let's say for instance the client have their legs crossed, their shoulder are going to be a, a one higher than the other, meaning that the body is not straight. You want to make sure that the center uh center your weight. You want to make sure that your knees are slightly bent, not locked. Bend one knee to lean slightly. You also want to stand in front of the section you're being cut. I'm gonna show you guys this video that is very um, interesting and good things uh, is, is about how to hold and uh, you know the hair uh, and make sure you have proper posture, arm and body position. So let me go ahead and get it started. So when you think about body position, where do you want to stand when you're cutting? Basically, you want to stand exactly right behind or right in front of the area that you're cutting. 
almost want to feel like you're doing a little dance over here. <laughs> your clients may think you're crazy, but you know, you want to basically put yourself and your body in a position that is exactly where you're cutting. Perfect example, and I see this all the time. A proper way of cutting, and this is what I do, is I'm going to comb the hair straight out from the head. Notice I'm standing right here, parallel to where I'm cutting, and I'm going to cut straight up this way. Again, if we're going to take the shear up this way, I'm literally standing. I can stand in the same spot and cut this whole section this way without moving my body. Where it gets complicated is a lot of times I'll see stylus. Now, it's okay if you're right here and you're comfortable. Notice how this elbow is starting to kind of come up and go over the top. When it gets really painful to watch is when a lot of stylists, literally, and this is going to hurt my back, and you know I have back issues, coming over the top and really reaching over and going over. Now, what that's doing, it's because I have an injury, it's really starting to bother me, to be honest with you. But you put yourself in such an awkward position, and next thing you know, you're just, it's a, it's a mess. And I see it all the time. Instead, what you need to do is have the client face you and stand in that same position. You can literally stand in the same position the whole time and cut a whole head. What you need to do is switch your body position and now look, I'm back to where I was before. My elbow, my arm, it's in a good position. I'm parallel and I'm not hurting myself, I'm not overextending or putting my body in awkward positions. Let's talk about arm and elbow positioning. Now, it's, let's keep it very, very simple. This is parallel. If you want to build weight, you're going to uh, go over the top this way or create weight going down. Or if you want to remove weight, you're going to cut towards this way. Your arm is going to dictate your elbow where you're cutting and what technique you're doing. So here's a perfect example of cutting straight across horizontally and keeping your arms and everything level. Comb it straight up. I'm going to cut across like this, okay? And I'm just mocking this. But this is this is essentially the body position you want to be in, to cut straight across. You're keeping everything parallel, which is a good... When I see people cutting this way, I'm like, okay, they know they have good training. What I see way too often is this. This arm down and coming across this way. It's just, to me, doesn't look great, and it could cause inconsistencies. Here's another thing. If you're looking to build weight or create graduation, it's when you, you can cut down this way. If you want to remove weight, your elbow is pointed towards the ceiling this way, okay? Or you can remove by cutting this way as well, all right? Going up this way. So if you're doing long layers or you're doing, you know, you, you extend your arm up this way and you cut short to long. Your arm and your elbow pretty much will tell you and show you how to cut, okay? Short to long, see? And your comb and your shears all should be kind of working together in sync. Here's another example of cutting short to long. Now remember, you're going to be cutting based off of where the parting is. You have to keep that in mind too. So you can literally cut short to long the whole way going this way, around the head and, and the back over here. Again, elbow will determine the extreme amount of angle and how much weight in your room. So if I point way up to the ceiling this way, if you can see, I'm cutting an extreme short to long angle. I'm not going to cut it. Now, if I turn my fingers and it's not so extreme, then we're still cutting short to long. If I bring my fingers a little more, you know, so as you can see, your finger and your body positioning really dictate everything. This really controls all of it when it comes to hair cutting. For men's hair, women's hair, anything you're doing. Now, if I went over the top this way, I'm going to be creating and building weight because this is going to be a longer piece and it's going to lay over the shorter piece creating weight or graduation. So just keep in mind, keep it very, very simple. Anytime that you're working on a haircut, really, really pay attention to how you're standing. All right, here's another example. Pay attention to your body positioning. Very, very crucial. Same thing here. Short the longer. If I cut this short, it's going to be short working up into longer lengths. If I cut this parallel, we're going to have it straight across. And if I go reverse this way, we're going to actually, you know, build 
weight going on top of it, which I wouldn't necessarily do. So again, this really, really controls the end result when cutting. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment. Okay, so that's just um, all, he's uh, mentioning how to properly uh, when based on the layering, uh, how it plays a major role, how you're standing. But you always want to stand in front of the section you're cutting, okay? Um, it's important body position because eventually if you're not using, if you're not doing the proper steps or the proper procedures, uh, after so many cuts, after, you know, a couple of years, two, three years, you you start taking a toll on your body. So uh, you want to protect your body because this is going to be your career. So you want to make sure that you don't have back issues, you don't have uh, problems in the future so that way you can continue with a long uh, term career you know Oops. Keep moving. Uh, hand position for different angles he pretty much mentioned many of them cutting over your finger this is most uh, uh, used most often when cutting uniform or increasing layers uh, you uh, cut in below your fingers or uh, inside your knuckles. This is used for cutting blunt or bob cuts. Uh, and then cutting palm to palms is used when cutting a vertical position or cutting line. It is best uh, to maintain control of a subsection. The last slide that we're going to talk about today is maintaining safety in hair cutting. It is absolutely, it is absolutely essential for you to keep in mind that when you're cutting a uh, hair, accidents can happen. So you will be handling sharp tools and instruments and you must always protect yourself and your client by following the proper precautions. So always palm the shears and razor when combing or parting the hair. This keep the points close and pointed away from the client. Palm and shears also reduce strain on your index finger and thumb while cutting hair. While I'm not cutting hair, while combing the hair, actually. And uh, one thing that I still do here and there uh, is passing the second knuckle. Uh, this is a big thing. Uh, for any beauty school, they will tell you this. Do not pass your second knuckle. This skin is soft. Uh, the skin is soft and fleshy and past the second knuckle, is, it is easy to cut. So take extra, uh, make sure to take extra cutting, uh, taking, uh, make sure to take extra uh, care when cutting around the ears. Um, not uh, because accidents can happen and you can accidentally cut the ear. I, that almost happened to me, thankfully, ugh, I didn't cut through the skin, but it have happened to me once before. Um, cut on the ear can produce large amount of blood. So yes, uh, if you cut a piece of skin, uh, the client's gonna freak out you too as well, and it's not gonna be a happy ending, so be careful. So be careful also when cutting with razor. When working with a razor, learn uh, uh, learn with a guard. Make sure you have a guard in it. Uh, you should never practice holding, palming, or uh, or cutting with the razor without a guard unless directed or supervised by your instructor. Make sure to take care uh, when removing and disposing of the razor blade because when you finish, you use the blade for one client and then remove it. So you have to be very careful. Make sure you to use a discard, uh, use a uh, discard the use blades in a puncture proof container because you know if you th throw in the trash uh, and there's nothing, you know, when the person will pick up the trash back, um, they may have an accident uh, with the racer. So make sure you are just um, use it. In a, I mean, dispose it in a puncture proof container. So that's it for today. Y'all have a great day.